All right, we're recording. Welcome everybody to the call. I'm very excited to be here. Thank you, Melissa, for inviting me to, to talk to the team tonight. My name's Eric Johnson. I'm the creator and CEO of Teamsy. If you haven't seen Teamsy, it's a CRM system designed for network marketers. You're gonna love it if you haven't seen it. We'll talk about it a little bit tonight. Um, there's a couple things I wanna do though. First, I wanna talk to you a little bit about relationship marketing, which is an approach to this business that Teamsy's built on. So I wanna teach you a little bit of that philosophy. And I think it will resonate with a lot of you on how to build your business so that you never have to feel icky and you can always feel really good about what you're doing. And then I'll take you into Teamsy. I'll show you how easy it is to set it up. We actually have a custom version coming next week for Scout and Seller, which is going to be really cool. I'm going to be demonstrating for you the standard version of Teamsy. It's called Teamsy Standard. So if you want to get started tonight, you get so excited, you're going to go to Teamsy.com. And when you start your free trial, you go to the Teamsy Standard version. And then once the Scout and Seller version's up and running, we'll be able to flip you over really easily, okay? So let's go ahead and jump in. I'm gonna dive right into this presentation to start. So this is what I wanna to talk to you guys about, which is how to leverage relationship marketing to become a power hour boss. Oh yeah, that's the other cool thing about Teamsy. It design, it's designed so you can get everything you need to do in your business done in less than one hour a day, okay? Right? Can I get an amen on that one? How many of you have more than an hour a day for your business? Probably not very many of you. So that's why we built this. So my backstory is I come from a background of business coaching and consulting. I've been a professional business consultant for, gosh, how many years? 16 years now. I help people build their businesses based on relationships, on systemizing their contact with people. Um, I come from a different industry, not direct sales at all. I fell into network marketing by accident. I found uh, some products that really helped me. Um, and, and I loved them and I just started sharing them. How many of you, that's kind of how, how you got, your business got started. And when I saw the business opportunity that it had kind of for a side business, I thought this is really cool. And so I started looking at my schedule, you know, as a professional business consultant, I thought, okay, what do I need to do to be successful? And I, when I looked at my schedule, I realized I only had about an hour a day. And so I started looking for tools that would help me leverage my time. See, when you're a new business owner, you look to invest in things that will save you time or make you money. Those are the two things you're worried about, right? How do you leverage time and what will return on the investment? So I started looking for some tools. And honestly, I couldn't find anything that I liked. There was certainly nothing based on how to build by relationship. Um, you're going to hear me riff on this a little bit tonight as I train you. The word relationship is used a lot in our business, but very few trainers are actually teaching people how to build relationships. They're still teaching old school tactics that damage relationships. So we had to create our own tool because there was nothing out there with the right philosophy or that was easy enough for me to use. So we built Teamsy. That's kind of the backstory on Teamsy. For those of you who haven't heard of Teamsy, we're three and a half years old. Um, we are now in more than 70 different networks. We've had more than 80,000 network marketers use Teamsy in the last three years, which is kind of amazing. And people who are using it regularly are averaging uh, 12 distributors and 21 customers new to the business over 90 days. Okay, let's see here. So what is relationship marketing? A lot of people throw this word around and they think it's like just selling stuff to your friends or whatever, just hitting all your relationships up, relationships up to see who's interested. But I want you to understand that relationship marketing is a lead generation system. It's a lead generation system, okay? That's a system that initiates consumer interest or inquiry into the products or services of a business. In other words, you're business owners now. Your first job is to decide which lead generation system to employ for your business. Because your business is not selling amazing, clean, crafted wine. Your business is the lead generation business. You are in the lead generation business. And it does not matter how busy you were today. If you didn't do the activities that lead to new leads, then you didn't build your business today. You were just busy, okay? So it's just a mindset shift I want you to have. Now, here's the other cool thing about relationship marketing. Developing and deepening relationships is your paramount duty as a business owner. Developing and deepening relationships is your paramount duty as a business owner. So your job is to generate new leads, in other words, make, meet new people, so that you can develop a relationship with them. Not so you can sell them wine, not so you can sign them up. If your focus is meeting people and building relationships with them, your business is going to be booming all the time. Because what we do with those relationships is we turn them into advocates. We turn them into advocates. 
by investing time and providing outstanding service. We turn them into advocates. I just want you guys to know something. If you're focused on selling wine, or if you're focused on recruiting somebody to the team, you're missing out on the opportunity to get their entire network. If your focus instead is on building advocates, getting people on board your mission, getting people to be excited about what you're doing, they'll bring you much more than their business. Does this make sense? Building advocates is the key here. And along the way, you get lots of sales and recruits. That's great. That, that feeds you now. The advocates feed you later. So the next principle I want to share with you, I hope you guys are taking notes. I'm throwing a lot at you tonight, but it's going to be fun. Relationship marketing depends on trust. Relationship marketing depends on trust. In other words, if you're a jerk, this ain't going to work. Okay. How many of you have come across things, people have said, oh, try this or do this or use this script that have made you uncomfortable to do? You guys might have come across some of that stuff in this business. I want you to know that with relationship marketing, it depends on trust, which means we don't do anything tricky. We don't do anything disingenuous. You don't do anything that's going to make you feel weird. Nothing that's going to make you uncomfortable talking to your friends because you get to be your true, authentic self, and that is the bedrock most important core of your business, okay? Because trust makes the work fun. If people trust you just a little bit, you don't have to convince them. You don't have to sell them. You don't have to trick them. You don't have to create curiosity. They're one of my pet things I love to hate. You can get right to helping them. You can get right to helping them. Also, if trust removes the ickiness from the sales process, you'll never be considered an icky salesperson or icky network marketer, or one of those pyramid people, when you build a little bit of trust, okay? And then you get to go for yes. You get to go for yes. Instead of this whole concept that's constantly taught about going for no, like you're just going to get a thick skin and just go through your list. People will reject you and that's okay. You just keep going. Have you guys heard that kind of stuff? No. With relationship marketing, you go for yes, man. Nobody's rejecting you. People might not be interested right now, but there's no rejection. It's the difference in approach. Make sense? Okay, so how do you build trust? How do you actually do it? I'm going to share with you the four essential ingredients to building trust tonight. The, okay, so let's go through them quickly, and then I'll just break them out and explain them to you. Number one is chemistry. Chemistry. Number two is character. Okay, character. Number three is competence. Competence. And number four is consistency. Chemistry, character, competence, consistency. All right, let's break these out. Chemistry. Chemistry is where you have common ground with someone. What is it about you they can relate to? Okay, chemistry is where you have common ground with someone. What is it about you they can relate to? You have to take a minute to find out what you have in common with somebody. Ask some questions. Find out. Nobody wants to do business with someone they don't like. True? And uh, studies have shown that 88% of people prefer in the U.S. prefer to do business with a friend. So the first step is finding what you have in common with someone. Just, just a little side note on this. Don't do, you no longer, if you really, if you really are serious about building your business, social media is a huge tool, right? Is that true? Would you guys agree? Which means you no longer get to be opinionated and divisive in your life. Your business is out there. So the other half of chemistry is don't do anything that, that, that sets people off. Like, don't get into those conversations. Does this make sense? On social media and things like that. Stay away from that. Find common ground with people. You can disagree passionately on something with somebody, and they could still enjoy the wine. True? <laughs> so don't be divisive. Find common ground. Find ways to unite others. Number two is character. Character is when you demonstrate how much you care and that you are relatable. Character is when you demonstrate how much you care and that you are relatable. I want you guys to notice something about this definition. You don't actually have character. Sorry, you don't have character. Character is something you do. It's an action that you take. A lot of times we feel like our character is it's just something we own, and then we get offended if someone questions our character. Your character, the, your character yesterday doesn't matter. Your character today matters. It's what you're going to do today. How are you going to demonstrate it today? Okay. And this is so important because as a business owner, everything you do when you're building, everything you do builds trust or erodes it. The way you talk to your, treat your customers, the way you post on social media, the way you follow through and follow up with people who you told you're going to follow up with, 
the, the way you put your shopping cart away instead of leaving it in the middle of the parking lot. I don't care. Driving politely in traffic. Like these are all parts of your character, right? Your whole life. It's about demonstrating how much you care. This is so important. I just want you guys to think about it because you have to start building your brand 24 seven. Number three, competence. Competence is when you demonstrate you're good at what you do and you're a business person. Okay. Competence is when you demonstrate you're good at what you do and you're a business person. Do you know what you're talking about? Can you help me? Do you know, have you learned about wine? Have you learned about the wines that you guys have? Are you competent enough to explain these things to me and, and to show me why it's better? If you want me to be your customer, I need to know you know what you're talking about. Okay. The second piece of this is if you want me to join your team, I need to know you know about the business, that you can mentor me in this business and you can help me grow it. Does this make sense? There's two pieces. One is competent as the, the representative of the product and the other is competent as the business leader. And if you want me to join you and to trust you, I need to see that you're competent. Now, here's one cool thing I want you to know. I, I know you guys are a pretty new company. How many of you are fairly new to the business? For new people, sometimes you might hear somebody say something like, just fake it till you make it. Have you guys heard, heard that kind of thing in the past? Yeah. So don't do that. No fake. Okay. With relationship marketing, it can't be fake. The whole thing falls apart. The trust goes away and it's gone. When you're new, you don't need to fake that you're competent. You learn, start working on your competence. Be a sponge, absorb, learn, but lean into the competence of your team. Tell people, hey, I'm brand new, I don't know a thing, but I'm connected to the most knowledgeable people in this business, okay? And I can connect you to them. We can, together, we can plug into their training. This is a great opportunity at ground floor. Let's do this together. So when you're new, you lean into the competence of your team, but get focused on building yours, okay? There's one little principle on this before I jump to the next uh, number four, which is this principle. When somebody's going to do business with you, they really only care about these three things. Can I trust you? Do you care about me? And are you good at what you do? Can I trust you? Do you care about me? And are you good at what you do? These are questions of the heart and they may not say them out loud, but they feel them as emotions. And you need to understand that when you get objections in your business, it comes from these questions. How do you overcome it? You build, I mean, you learn to overcome objections, obviously, but that's a short-term solution. Long-term, you build the relationship. You invest in the relationship. Over time, you build trust and this goes away. Make sense? Then you get to a point where you get to, I, I've actually had this experience in my business where somebody has texted me and it's uncomfortable because I don't even know if it's legal, but they've texted me a photo front and back of their credit card and said, just order me what you think I need. That's somebody who, who trusts, knows you care, and knows that you're going to take care of them. Does that make sense? You'll get to that point as you build trust. It's kind of hard to believe in the beginning when people are like, what is this wine thing you're doing? But I want you guys to know that building relationships, it compounds. Number four is consistency. Consistency, right? If you're going to build trust, you got to be consistent. How many of you have told your spouse or you've heard from your spouse, don't tell me, show me, right? And one time doesn't count. Consistency. How many of you guys have kids, parents? Is it pretty important to try to be consistent with your kids? I've got four kids and I have to tell you that if I, if I yield on one time, they never forget it. They never forget it. Why can't I do that? Well, because we don't do that in this family. Do you remember dad in 2016 when you let us have ice cream for breakfast? I'm pretty sure that precedent has been set. <laughs> Consistency is how you build trust, okay? I love this principle about consistency though. It's a little extra bonus, which is people respect consistency and desire it for themselves. People respect consistency and they desire it for themselves. As you become more consistent, it builds trust with people. It also attracts them to you. They want some of that in their life. I wish I could be like you. How many of you have been told by somebody that you inspire them? And you think, me? I inspired you? That's pretty cool. But most likely it's because they see you doing things consistently and they admire that. Okay. This, by the way, just a little side note, this principle is lifted from one of my favorite books. I'm going to recommend to you if you guys are into, are you guys into personal development and growth? Okay, cool. Here's one to add to your list. It's called Influence, the Psychology of Persuasion. I'll put the title up here on my slide for you. Influence the Psychology of Persuasion by Dr. Robert Cialdini. This, this, if you have, this is a classic, but if you haven't read this or heard of it, put it on your list. You can also get it on Audible. Um, this, if you're serious about being a leader in this business, this is huge because you need to understand 
that leadership is influence. Leadership is influence. You're on a mission to help people. You got to learn how to influence people, be an influence for good in their lives. Okay. How many of you are pretty good about um, consistently drinking your wine? <laughs> That's the best part about selling wine. Everybody uses the product, right? And you share it, right? You share it with others. How many of you are good about sharing on social media? Sharing your journey, sharing what you're doing on social media, things like that. Good. It's important to be consistent. Here's the question though, the real checkup from the neck up. Are you as consistent with your relationships? Are you as consistent with your relationships? See, when I started the, my business, I, uh, I was like, social media is great, man. It makes it so easy. I can share things on social media, get a few people interested. I eat every month. But what I realized was connecting with people was what would really mattered. Okay. And that's why staying in touch with people, it's more important than just being consistent on social media or being consistent about using the product. See, relationship building is a contact sport. You have to be in regular contact with people. You just got to be. That's how you build relationships. And I would tell you that you need to be in contact with every single person you know. I mean, literally everybody you've ever met and all the people you're meeting, you should be in regular contact with them. I know your time is scarce. That's why you need a system to do that. By the way, I'm the Teamsy guy, so I'm going to show you the system tonight that we built for this. But here's the principle on this. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. Okay, just really quick. Let me stop my share real quick. See your faces. Are your cameras on? If not, flip them on for a second. I know it's, it's bedtime back there, but I just want to see your faces for a second. How many of you guys have ever received a great card from somebody that you love, you know, a, a spouse or somebody that's given you a card and they've written a message, handwritten something that's really moved you emotionally. Have you guys ever received a great, a great, great card like that from somebody? If you're not raising your hand, you didn't get one, just put your address in the chat and we're going to write you one because everybody should get a card like that sometime. This is the cool thing about cards like this. They have like a lasting impact. How many of you, after you got a great card, crumble it up and throw it in the trash can. <laughs> Nobody's hand went up. I don't know if that means you're enga not engaged or you didn't, don't throw them away. How many of you keep those cards? You save them somewhere. You just can't bear to throw them out. You've got like a pile somewhere or a drawer. Like you wish you could get rid of it, but you just can't, right? It's funny how everybody does this. We save them because they, they're meaningful. We can't throw them out. And in fact, when we pass away, what's often most treasured by our family? the cards and letters that we received. Isn't that true? Do, do any of you have in your possession cards or letters from somebody that has passed away that you loved and you've kept those? We treasure those. That's like the, a really amazing example of investing time and connecting with somebody. True? Now, how many of you ever received one of these? This is a, this is a birthday postcard. Happy birthday postcard just a postcard. I got it from my um, life insurance salesperson. Do you guys, anybody get one of these sometimes in the mail? The dentist maybe, right? Um, this is, is this nice? This, it's nice. It says, uh, here's to another great year of you. Well, it's pretty good because I can send that to anybody, right? Because it's, it's not personalized. Wishing you all the best. So it's nice. How many of you keep these in the special place with the other ones? Is this the one your grandkids are going to use as a bookmark in their Bible after you're gone? <laughs> no way. This goes right in the trash. What's the difference? I'm just doing, I know I'm beating the dead horse here, but I want you guys to get the point. This is not personal and it required no time investment. Okay. It's not personal. It required no time investment. We do not value it. Does this make sense? Now, it probably is worth it for him to do this. He probably gets a couple of people going, oh yeah, I need life insurance, right? Just like we throw a post up on Facebook or on, on Instagram and somebody goes, wow, wine? And you're like, wow, that was a home run. I got somebody. You'll get some this way, but it's not valuable. It, doesn't, it does not advance the relationship. This make sense? Connecting with people, investing time is how you advance the relationship. Building relationships and trust is how you create a business that, that supports itself over time. Okay, so real quick on this. Do you need to be writing people love letters every day in your business? No. Just connecting on Facebook Messenger or by text message, 
but directly to them personally, investing a few seconds of your day in them is how you connect. Now, yes, you should send cards when appropriate. <laughs> Make that part of your thing because people will save them forever, especially as you become a leader in this business, sending handwritten cards to your team when they, when they rank up and things like that. I mean, they'll keep them forever. Just a little, I know I have too many stories, but I just got to tell you guys this story. In, 2000, uh, in 2008, eight nine, we had the big recession. Do you guys remember that? How many of you guys got your butt kicked by that recession? I did. I, I got laid off my job after 10 years. Um, I know 10 years is not that long, but it just happened to be the longest I'd ever worked somewhere. They laid me off. And, um, and I had to go work for, I'd go find another job. It was really scary. I had a couple kids at the time. And uh, on one of my interviews, I interviewed first with the executive assistant of the CEO, right? She interviewed me before I got to see the CEO for the job. And after my interview, I wrote her a note, thanking her for her time. Didn't think anything of it. So I interviewed the CEO. I got the job. I worked there for a year. And after a year I left, it wasn't really a fit for me. And I actually had an opportunity to go back to my old company. But um, I went to, and sat in this woman's office to sign my exit interview paperwork. And what did I see on her desk next to her computer? The handwritten card I sent her a year ago, thanking her. It was, it's been on her desk for a year. Like it meant that much. I'm just saying, people don't take the time to connect with each other anymore. What I'm teaching you tonight is the secret weapon. Even though I've taught 100,000 people this in the last three years, not everybody still has not got it. If you guys take what I'm teaching you tonight, you'll be unstoppable and it will be so much fun to build this business. Okay, so I think I've got one more slide and then we'll actually show you Teensy, which you guys are gonna, it's gonna blow your way. So investing time, connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. Now that you got the idea, you gotta have a system. There's no way to stay in touch with a large list of people without a system. You'll lose them. They'll start falling through the cracks. You need a way that you can stay in touch with everybody, with all your relationships. You need to know when to contact them, when not to contact them. In other words, I don't want you spending all day planning and thinking and organizing. I want you just to be able to dive in and go. Know what you're going to say so you don't get stuck in front of your computer all day trying to figure out the perfect thing to say. How many of you guys are like that? Just boom, I want to be able to start this conversation and move on quickly and a system that makes sure nobody falls through the cracks. In our business, people who are good at this waste 80% of their leads fall through the cracks. People who are good at our business, 80% of their leads fall through the cracks. I'm telling you right now, I talk to people in this business that are seven figure earners. And when I show them teams, they're like, oh my gosh, this is what I'm missing. I've wasted so many people. So I'll show you that right now. Let's do it. Okay, let's see here. Teamsy, where are you? Uh, here we go. All right. So first off, as I was mentioning before, well, I don't know if I mentioned this, but if you go to teamsy.com, you can start a free trial of teamsy. It's free for 30 days. Free. We don't ask for your credit card number or anything weird. We just want you to use it for a full 30 days. Why do I give you that much time? Because I know that you can generate sales in 30 days. Okay. So if you're free, you're brand new, you don't have a single penny, you go use teamsy for free, generate some sales. And you can continue with Teamsy and you have now some fuel to run your business. Make sense? Okay. So when you first log into Teamsy, you're going to come into the setup wizard. That's what I have on my screen. I'll take you through setup. It's super easy. It's made for people like me who are not super techie. How many of you guys are not super techie? Yeah. CRMs, I was like, oh my gosh. In my old job, <laughs> in my corporate job, when I had to put a note in the CRM, I used to write it on a sticky note and hand it to my assistant and ask him to put it in the CRM for me. That's how, that's how averse I was to that software. And ironically, I, I built a CRM and now market it. Isn't that funny? But mine's super easy. Don't worry. Even I can do it. So what we're going to do, first thing we're going to do in this is set our income goal. How much money do you want to be earning in your business? Now, I don't recommend anybody sets a goal that's less than $100,000 a year. Just saying. I don't know what the cost of living is like where you live, but that's not rich anymore, is it? So let's set it there, even if you only have an hour a day. Now, you can see I set mine to 150. That was my goal because at the time, that was my salary and I just wanted to replace it so I could be home with my kids. Make sense? But you can slide this to whatever you want your goal to be. And if, when you slide this, notice that the amount of connection you need to do each day changes. That makes sense? So I'm going to put it back to 150. There's my goal. So now in order to do this 12, in 12 months, I need to every day connect with nine prospects, six customers, and four, uh, four distributors. In this case, when I say distributors, I mean consultants, okay, on my team. 
All right, so let's hit continue. And then the last step here is just getting your contacts in Teamsy. Get everybody in here so that it's all organized in one place, okay? If you've got a team already, you're gonna go into the back office and export, get your, um, get your consultants imported into Teamsy, get your customers and your club members imported into Teamsy. Um, you can get all of your Facebook friends imported into Teamsy, which is amazing. That was my favorite thing. But all those people you're connected with on Facebook, you can now have on a list and you can work it in an organized way. Right? And these are just some instructions on how to do this stuff, step-by-step -step instructions. Again, you can't really mess it up. There's some videos and stuff. You just follow these steps and you can get all those contacts in. Um, and then once you get everybody in, I'm gonna skip this part. You've just got one more thing for setup. So here's the Teamsy dashboard, okay? We've got one more thing that we need to do to set up now that we've got everybody into Teamsy. We need to um, actually, I call it ranking. We need to rank the relationships, okay? So how many of you have ever um, either, either reviewed something online or read the reviews for like Yelp or Amazon or something like that? You guys understand how a five-star system works, right? So just like you would review a pepperoni pizza, hey, this was a five-star pepperoni pizza. Now we're going to review our relationships the same way. <laughs> Five stars, four stars, three stars. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle over to the team page. See where it says team on the left side? The team page is where your, everybody you know lives. Like this is where all of your contacts are, okay? For those of you familiar with CRM, contact relationship management software, this is the CRM. It's kind of like your electronic Rolodex, okay? So here's everybody. What we're going to do is I'm going to toggle on rank mode from this little menu here. That lets me look at my whole list with their ranking open. So now I can just jam down my list and rank everybody. Why is this an important step? It's because in relationship marketing, you need to spend more time with the best people. Okay, so let me just kind of explain this. Have you guys ever heard of the 80-20 rule? Anybody ever heard the 80-20 rule? The 80-20 rule is that 80% of your business will come from 20% of your relationships. Okay, so the, the majority of your business will come from 20% of your relationships. We just, we may not know exactly who those 20% are right now, but we do know who we feel the best about, who trusts us the most, who we have the best relationship with now. Okay, and so we want to make sure that we talk to those people first while we're working through our whole list. And the way we do that is by ranking them so Teamsy can create a list that's prioritized for us to connect with every day. So let me just give you an example of this, what these stars mean. A five star is somebody most likely to become a consultant or a customer, okay? Or they're an existing customer or consultant that's a rock star on your team. These are five star people. These are your best friends, your closest family. These are the people you feel the best about that trust you the most. Five star people will come up on your list automatically every 30 days, not to sell them, but just to connect, just to say hello, just to keep the relationship hot, okay? Four star people, that's somebody who's likely to become a customer or a consultant with a little bit of nurturing. These are your friends and your family, but not your inner innermost circle. Four star people show up every 60 days. Okay, they come back every 60 days automatically. You don't have to set a follow up, you don't have to set a reminder. They just come up automatically. Okay, they cycle through. Three star people could go either way. You just don't know yet. In fact, most of your list will be three stars. Okay, the vast majority will be three stars. Those people come on your list every 90 days. They just cycle through. They just cycle through. Two-star people are getting colder there every 120 days. Does this make sense? The more stars you assign, the more often they come up. So what we're going to do is when you come onto your list, everybody will come into Teamsy at three stars automatically since that's where most people live anyways. What I want you to do is you scroll this list, and when you see somebody you feel great about, you just rank them up to a five or a four just by clicking on it, okay? You want to get your five and your fours picked out so that they come up first. If you don't do this, what happens? Let's say you have 3,000 friends on Facebook and you import them into Teamsy, okay? You may have people that trust you now who, are, who would be really excited about hearing what you're doing, but you might not get to them for six months because they're not prioritized. They're just gonna come up when they come up. Does this make sense? So take a minute to prioritize. Now, once we've done that, it saves as you go. You can just click on the star ranking to give them a rank. It saves, we can just go back to the dashboard. Now we're ready to do a power hour. So let me show you how a power hour works. One cool thing about that setup I just showed you, once you've done it once, you never have to think, you never have to plan ever again. You just turn on Teamsy and you start connecting with people. It'll tell you who's up next. So let me show you how this works. 
Here's the Teamsy dashboard. Um, again, I'm showing you guys right now the Teamsy standard version. Next week, we're going to have one customized to you. So some of the some of the words and things will change. They'll be real custom. Okay. So here's my Teamsy dashboard. Today's activities right here. This is the goals. These are the goals we set with our income goal. So I'm going to connect with nine prospects today, six customers, and four distributors. You can see that I have the zeros across the board because I haven't done anything yet. Okay. And I've got some uh, a couple other goals. Invites. Okay, my goal is three and adds three. Okay, so let me tell you what those are real quick. So when I'm connecting with prospects, customers, and distributors, I'm just connecting. Just, hey, how are you? My goal is just to connect. I'm not trying to sell them. I'm not trying to vomit on them about my business. I'm just trying to start a conversation with them, and I want to make their day. That is my goal is to make their day. Get them to smile. Just like, wow, that was cool that he reached out to me. Okay, this is important. We call this the make someone's day mindset. I want you to live there. Your job in this business is to be in the make someone's day mindset. Okay. And if you live there, you're going to create great conversations, have lots of opportunities. Now invites, this goal, an invite is where I'm inviting somebody <clears throat> to buy some wine to join the business because I've uncovered some interest in our conversation. Okay. And as these are just new people I'm adding to the list. You can see I added one today because I added Melissa to my list. <laughs> right? Cool. Okay, so now that now you can change these goals anytime, by the way, by clicking on edit daily goals right here. See that right there, that little link? Okay, so let's do our power hour. See right here, this little box in the center of my screen, it's called the power hour box. This is designed to help you do your business building activities in less than an hour. It is so easy, okay? The left side gives you four lists, prospects, customers, distributors, and follow-ups, okay? Each list has five names at a time. That's on purpose. That's to keep you focused and to keep you from getting overwhelmed, right? The right-hand side is where we log the activity as we go so that it's logged as we go. There's no homework. There's no like, hey, I got to get into Teamsy later and log what I did. You do it as you go and it's all done and tracked, okay? So what you do to do your power hours, you just open up Teamsy on your desktop or it could be on your phone. We have a mobile website that's amazing. And you look at, we're going to start with prospects, always work from left to right. So we're going to start with my prospects list. I'm going to start connecting with people. First person on my list is Jay Lisa Swain. You can see she's up next. This is my up next list. So now I'm going to connect with her. Right here, I've got in a separate tab, I've got Facebook open. I'm going to actually use Facebook Messenger to connect with her. Okay. My personal preference is Facebook Messenger because it gets the best response rate. So whenever I can, I message people on Facebook. Uh, my second favorite would be text message. Okay. So just think about, think about things that people will see pop on their phone. Those are your best communications types. Makes sense. A lot of people talk on Instagram, which is great. If someone's active there, you can do that. Snapchat, whatever, you know, like the point is you want to connect. With them. All right. Hold on a second. I'm just going to mute, mute you guys one more time. Okay. So I'm going to connect with Jay. Now, this is where I used to get stuck. What do I say to Jay? Do you guys ever get stuck here? You see a name and you're like, oh, right. I barely know this person. Maybe I don't. I've come across names. I don't remember how, how we became friends. Does that happen to you guys? Maybe on Facebook or something, for example. So here's what I want you guys to know. Um, I've been doing this a long time. We've now worked with 80,000 direct sellers. Like we've refined this technique down to so effective. I put scripts in here to help you get started, okay? These aren't sales scripts. These aren't gag me with a spoon sales scripts. <laughs> How many of you grew up in the 80s and you got that one? <laughs> okay, these are just to get, get the conversation started. So what you're gonna do is go over here to the connect box and click on scripts. See it right there? I'm circling it with my uh, little pointer there. Let's just grab a script. I'm just gonna grab a simple script, okay? Connect number one. Hi, Jane. Just stopping by to say hello. How are you? I hope your day is awesome. By the way, this is my favorite script. It, it, this thing has opened so many doors for me. So I'll just show you how to do this. Just copy it, okay? Then what you can do is you can paste it into Teamsy and then, and then edit it. You know, get the name right, because Jane is just a sample name, right? Um, I like the way it's worded, because I wrote it, but you might want to change a couple words to make it sound like your voice. Put some emoticons in there, right? You guys are, how many of you guys have to put an emoticon on a message? I do. I know we got some like New Englanders, you know, like you don't mess around, straight to the point. I'm from California, emoticons, come on, emoticons. 
Okay, so I put a couple of emoticons in there. Now it's ready for me to go. Now check this out. I'm just gonna copy this now and send it in Facebook because Facebook makes you actually send messages through Facebook. So I'm on Facebook on a separate tab. I'm just gonna look Jay up. There she is. And I'm gonna send her this message. That I've got queued up and ready. Look at that, boom, send. I just pasted it in there. That's been sent to Jay. So now I'm gonna finish logging it in Teams. You see the big blue button that says log connect? That's how you do it. I'm gonna click it. And now she's gone off my list. See, I've got one done, eight left. My list has slid up one name. Where did Jay go? She's gone back in my list. She was a five star. She'll come back in 30 days if I don't hear from her. I don't have to think about her. Next on my list is Melissa. I'm just gonna use that same script I already have on the clipboard to save myself some time and just change the name. Okay. Oops, I spelled it wrong. If I had sent it to her spelled wrong, my life wouldn't have ended. Hopefully I would catch it. And then we could have a great conversation about what a dummy I am. And then I would just tell her to spell my name with a K for the next year until, until she felt good about it and we'd move on. Look, I want you guys to know that just when somebody responds, even because you misspelled their name or you, they responded for whatever reason, like they responded. Now you're having a conversation. That's awesome. Okay, so now I've got this ready. Look, I'm just going to jump over here. There she is. Okay. Send message. Whoa, send message. There we go. Bam. See? See how easy this is? So easy. Is this easy? This is so easy. Look, I'm going to log this one. Log it. Next, next person on my list is Faith. Two done, eight to, uh, two done, seven to go. I'll just keep going down my list, sending that first message. Okay? Just send it. Now, a couple things will happen. Some people will respond right away. Don't be tempted to run off and have the conversation yet. Make sure you get all your outgoing messages done. Get your power hour done. Then you can go have the conversations. It won't take long. In fact, it's taking me a lot longer to, to explain this than it would to do it. These numbers, uh, nine, six, and four, I could do that in less than 15 minutes if I wasn't talking to you about it. They'd be out, all of them out. Some people respond right away, just wait, talk to them afterwards. The people who don't respond, don't worry about them. Don't even think about them. They're gonna come back automatically on Teamsy in a month, two months, three months. Okay, they're gonna come back automatically. Each time you connect, they get warmer. Each time you connect, they might go look at your Facebook page. They might go look at your Instagram page. They're getting a little bit more to know you. Does this make sense? Okay. So I'm gonna go down my prospects list until the circle turns all the way blue and I hit my goal for the day. My goal was nine. So when I connect with nine people, send those out. Then I go to the next list, which is customers. Okay, and I'll start connecting with my customers the same way. I'll go to scripts, use one of Eric's handy dandy scripts to connect with my customers. Just something simple like this. Hi, John, how are you enjoying your wine? Send me an update. Let me know I'm gonna be of help. How easy is that, right? Um, hi, Jane, just checking in and see if there's anything I can do to make your day. That's my favorite one. If you haven't used that one, Melissa, I know you've been using Teamsy for a little bit. Have you used that one? Send that to a couple of your favorite people this week and you'll get great, you'll get great response. So the same idea, right? You're going to come in here, change the name, add a couple of emoticons, send the messages. Super easy. Okay. Log it in Teams and you go to the next one. You work your way down your customers until your customer goal is done. Real quick on customers before I jump into the next list. A lot of people are super focused on prospecting, 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 and it is important to prospect. But connecting with customers is equally as important. How many of you already have some customers? Awesome. There's a, here's what happens when you're in regular contact with customers. This is a statistical fact, by the way, not just in wine business, in any business. When you're in regular contact with customers, not only does it feel good to you because you're giving great service, right? But they will order more product and they will retain longer. When you are in regular contact with customers, they order more product and they retain longer. Just by being in contact, not because you're selling them, just by being there, by being available. Think about, think about going to an amazing restaurant and you have great service, right? When they're, when they're present, do you order more stuff? And so this is the way the business goes. Okay, this is the way the business goes. Stay in touch on a regular basis. They'll order more and they'll retain longer. You'll see that when you get a team going, like right now, this is happening for Melissa. We've got a bunch of you on a training with me. Some of you are going to be excited. She's going to see volume go up. Why? Because now you guys are fired up to talk to customers too. How many of you would like some more customers? 
and ultimately some more consultants, right? Where's the best place to get those? Do you guys know where to go? I know you guys don't go to wine stores for wine anymore. So where are you getting your customers? The best place to get a new customer or a new consultant is from a current customer. Okay. Makes sense, right? Because this is the way business is built. People find a product they like. What do they do? They tell other people about it. They're excited about it. We know this happens. This is why you guys are here on the call tonight because it happened to you. I want you guys to think about the customer. When I said, how many of you guys have customers? You raise your hands. Think about those customers. Those people are talking about Scout and Seller already. They're already talking about it with other people. You guys first need to understand that. The second piece of this is, are you in regular contact with those people? Are you getting introduced to the people they're talking to? Because you need to take it beyond the conversation now and get introduced because people actually make buying decisions based on their friends' recommendations. You know, it's 80, what is it, 86%, I think it is, in North America. 86% of North Americans say they make buying decisions based on the recommendations of a friend. So your customers are talking to their friends about Scout and Seller. You just need to be getting introduced to those people. Step one is getting in, being in regular contact with your customers and just letting them know. Melissa, I know you've been excited about your wine. I'm sure you've talked to your friends about it. Is there anybody that you care about that needs to learn more about this? Let's get them saving some money. Let's get them some clean wine. Who, have you, you know, who, do, who can you think of that needs more information on this? And then they say, oh, I was talking to my friend Susie yesterday. Awesome. Great. And I was also talking to my friend Heather. Okay, great. Would you mind introducing us so I can get them the information? Just uh, something easy like a Facebook group chat or a group text. Just say, hey, this is Eric, my wine person. I wanted to introduce you. We were talking about the other day. Great. I'll take it from there. That little simple technique, being in touch and doing that, you guys will grow your business unbelievably. By the way, when she gives me two friends and they're both interested, what am I going to say to her? You should do this. Be a consultant. I'll put them under you. Let's go. Are you with me? It's not that complicated. It's about being consistent. It's about caring for people. And it's about being there when they, to help them. Does this make sense? Okay. All right. I beat the drum on customers. Just wanted you guys to understand customers are the bomb. And when you have one or two customers, you now have a business. When I'm done connecting with my customers for the day, I'm going to go to my distributors and I'm going to connect with my team the same way because my team needs to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with me too. And if you've got two, just two consultants, this is easy. When you've got 50,000 consultants like my friend Kurt, it's not as easy, right? You need a system. But here's what I'll tell you. As the team grows, it's great to have a Facebook page. It's awesome to do live Zooms, but they need to hear from you. They need that relationship and that connection to you. You know, I held up this uh, Bob Cialdini book, who's the, probably the lead uh, social scientist of our generation. Actually, I guess he was my dad's generation. But anyways, you get the idea. He's still alive. <laughs> They've done all this science, all this studying of people. You know, people aren't money motivated. Did you guys know that? I won't, I'm just going to wait. Is it okay if I go off on a two-minute tangent on this? You guys okay with this? Okay, hold on. Let me stop this to share so I can look at your faces for a second. I just want to share this because it's important. People are not money motivated and they are not self-interested. Those are the two myths we've been taught. Part of the American dream for our whole life is that people are money motivated and self-interested. People are not. They've done the science on this, the social science on this. People are hardwired to help and serve others. And when we, when we get into a situation where we're pursuing wealth and pursuing self-interest, that's why people are depressed, have anxiety, why the suicide rate is through the moon. People are fulfilled and happy when they're helping others. That's, the, that's one. And what motivates people to work harder? Relationship, connection, belonging. Okay? Do you need to help your, your consultants make some money? Yeah, because we all, need, we all need to have food with our meals, correct? So, yeah, help them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's like, yes. There's my fan right there going, yes, please feed me, mom. But my point is this. Beyond that, you know, just that little bit of breathing room financially, people need to feel connected to something. And that's your job as leader. That's why I'm bringing you into Teamsy. That's why I'm showing you how you can systemize contacts so people feel cared for and loved and supported. And that will help people work for this business long enough to be successful. Because I guarantee you, there's ups and downs, right? 
in the business, there's lulls. It's like farmers planting crops. Farmers plant crops and then nothing happens for months. Think about how hard it is to be, if any of you grew up on a farm, how hard is that to be a farmer and go, are the seeds germinating? Will there be a crop? What, they, what you need in the meantime is relationship. Okay. There's my little drum. There, I shared you with a couple things. We're not self-interested and we're not money-oriented, money-driven. Okay, great. Next, so I connected with my prospects, my customers, my distributors. My goal was 19 people. I do that in 15 minutes. Do you guys see how you could do that in 15 minutes in Teamsy? Now, the next half of my power hour is to connect with my follow-ups list. Oh, wait, there's nobody on my follow-ups list. The follow-ups list on Teams is not automatic. You put people there. Here's how it works. I want you guys to understand this. Connecting with prospects, connecting with customers, connecting with distributors, having great conversations, making people's day. When, when we find people who are interested in learning about the business or joining us, we're going to invite them and put them on a follow-ups list. Everybody else that we're just talking to, they just cycle back through Teams. We just keep working on the relationship over time. We grab the interested people, we put them on our follow-ups list. These are the hot leads that we're going to be working on getting into our business. Okay. Now let me show you how to do this. And I'm going to teach you how to follow up. I'm going to teach you guys how to follow up like a pro so that you're not being annoying at the same time. Cool. All right. So we're going to use Melissa as our example. So I messaged Melissa. Hey, how are you? She's like, Oh my gosh, that was so nice Eric to hear from you. It's been forever can't believe it's been that many years since we graduated high school. What the heck have you been up to? And we're having a conversation, catching up, just messaging back for, oh my gosh, we're doing this, we're doing this. I've got four kids. How many kids are you? Oh my goodness, you know, blah, blah, blah. We're catching up. Just a conversation. Now in the goal, my goal is to catch up, find out what's going on in her life. And what I'm listening for, this is really important, you guys. If you're taking notes, make sure you write this down. I'm listening for some way I can help her. I just want to find a way to help her today. I need to help her somehow. Okay. Now, if she's like, I hate my job, I need more money, I love wine, I don't know what to do with myself, gosh, wouldn't that be great? Does that happen in most conversations? Probably not. So I'm just looking for some way to help her, whatever it may be. I can't believe, you know, I can't believe this hailstorm we had. Now I've got a leak in my roof and, you know, they're supposed to get rain again on Saturday. What do I do? Great. You get a leaky roof. I know an amazing roofer. I'm going to send you over his phone number right now and we'll get him over there to fix it. Oh, that'd be great. That's an example of me helping her. Does that have anything to do with selling her wine? No, listen for ways to help people. How can you help people? A good friend of mine who, was a, who owned a mortgage company, I worked with him helping him build his business for over a decade. One time I was actually, he's actually in Massachusetts, near you guys. I was actually in Massachusetts having dinner with him. And he told me that he has not slept more than three hours in 30 years. In one day, I should say. <laughs> And I said, really? He goes, yeah, I just don't sleep. I went out the next day, um, went to Barnes & Noble. I got a book on how to over, tips to overcome insomnia, wrote him a personal note in it, mailed it to him, blew his mind. I'm listening for ways to help people. Does this make sense? I want you to get in that mindset. How can I help this person? Now, as I'm talking to Melissa and I'm like, oh my gosh, you need a roofer? Great. I got a roofer for you. She's like, oh, wow, that's great. So we're catching up. I put a little deposit in her trust account by helping her, didn't I? And I put a little deposit in my account too. It lifted me up, lifted me up doing that. Makes me engaged for my business. So she says, what about you, Eric? What are you up to? Said, oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm, I do wine now. I share wine with people and it like pays for everything. I get to be home with my kids. It's the coolest thing. What? I'm going to share with her what I'm doing now. It's my update. What have you been up to? This is what I'm doing. Don't be scared to share your business. In a conversation, you're just sharing your update. This is what I'm doing. This is what I do and why I'm passionate about it. This is what I do, why I'm passionate about it. I hated my job. Actually, I didn't hate my job. I loved my job for a long time, and then I hated it. Anybody experience that? <laughs> I loved my job so much, and then I hated it. Um, and we got a new CEO who I didn't respect and I didn't want to be there anymore. And I suddenly didn't feel like there's a future there. This is actually my story. I'm not with scout and seller, but I just want you to know, like we all have a story like this. And now my business lets me be home. I'm home right now in my house. I told you guys that we're on the call early. Like I got out of the pool, threw some hair gel in and came in here to talk to you guys tonight. This is my life. It's pretty sweet. I'll be honest with you. 
this is what you need to share with people. This is so amazing. You know, I've got four kids. My youngest, who's uh, two and a half years old, she has never seen daddy leave the house to go to work like my other kids did. I've been with her every single day of her life. She sees me go in my office to work, but I'm always here, right? It's pretty cool. Share that stuff. This is what I do when I'm passionate about it. Wow, that's really cool. And then you just ask this, hey, Melissa, just, would you like to learn more about what I'm doing? That's all. It's just part of the conversation. You sounds like you might like this. I mean, do you like wine? You want to learn more about it? I can get you some more information if you're interested in more information. If she says, yeah, I'd like, yeah, send me, yeah, I'd like some more information. Great. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to invite her to my, learn about my business. Okay. If she says, uh, I'm really excited for you, Eric. That's awesome. I'm not really interested in that. You know what I'll do? You guys ready? Write this down. Do you guys ever get someone to say they're not interested? Does that ever happen? Great. Could you do me a favor, Melissa? Um, if you do come across somebody who would be interested in this or who's looking for something or who needs a way out, could you connect them with me? Because um, I'm just really, I just really want to help as many people as I can. Plant the seed. You just plant the seed and someone says they're not interested. But see, when you have a conversation, you genuinely help people and you care about them, they're not going to be like, you jerk, never talk to me again. I hate you. Is this a pyramid thing? Go away. Rejected. Slam. No, they're like, oh, cool. Good for you. That's cool. Okay. If you're not interested, great. I'm going to plant the seed. Hey, let's, it's great to catch up. Let's stay in touch. Okay, great. Guess what? They're going to come back up in three months on Teams. I'll message them again. We'll continue talking. In the meantime, I'm building trust with them. When Melissa does say, no, I am interested. I would like to learn more. Great. Now I'm going to invite her to something. I want to go deeper. I need to find out what she needs, how I can help her the best, right? Maybe I'll try to get her up on a Zoom call one-on-one -on -one so we can talk a little more, you know, or connect over the phone, whatever the case may be. But let me show you how I log it in Teamsy. First, I got to look her up because she's not on my dashboard anymore. But that looking her up in the lookup bar brings her full record up. And I can open that connect box right there. But see on the bottom left where it says invite? You guys see that? Okay, click on that. And these are just some examples of things that you can invite to. So let's say I'm gonna invite her to an event that we're doing. You guys do like uh, wine sharing events at your home or something like that? Great, so let's say I've got one of these coming up. Hey, why don't you come over tomorrow night, drink some wine? Okay, bring your husband, I can't wait to meet him, you know, whatever. Great, so I'm gonna invite her to an event, okay? So now I'm inviting her to the event. I'm just gonna log in here that it was, uh, I sent her a message and it was to our uh, wine sharing event. What do you guys call it, okay? And so now I'm gonna, this is gonna log in Teams that I'm inviting her to something and then I'm gonna set my follow-up. So let's say it's tomorrow night and so I'm gonna set my follow-up now for two days it's set. So this little calendar is my follow-up. When I put her on there, she's now gonna be moved over to my follow-ups list. Remember that empty list I showed you? So let me log that. And you can see now there's a follow-up set for her on the 11th. So let me toggle over to my dashboard and show you. So now you can see I have an invite logged. See that? The invite's logged. And if I go to my follow-ups list, there she is due on Tuesday. You guys with me? So as I'm connecting with people and I'm inviting them to something, now I'm putting them on my follow-ups list. These are the people I'm working consistently now to get into the business or to become customers. So we have our event. It's great. She learns all about the business. We have a great time together connecting. Next day, I'm going to connect with her and follow up and see if I can get her closed and join. Make sense? Okay. So let me show you this really quick. How do I do a follow-up in Teamsy? When I come to my follow-ups list, so my, again, my power hour is like this. Prospects, connect, 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 connect. Customers, connect, 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 connect. Distributors, you get the idea. And then I go to my follow-ups. First person on my list that's due is Melissa. I'm going to send her a follow-up. Again, just go to scripts. I've got all the follow-up scripts in here for you. I've made it really easy. Okay. Follow-up number one. Hi, Jane. Just checking in like I promised I would. What questions do you have for me? Okay. This is my follow-up script. I'm going to paste it in there the same way. Change the name. I cannot spell your name right. <laughs> there you go. I got it though. It's all good. So look, see how easy this is? Again, same exact thing. I'm going to just send her this message. It's a follow-up message. Great. Send. It's sent. If I didn't have her muted, you hear it ping on her phone. 
Look, so look, I'm going to log this. But before I log this connect, set the next follow-up. Got to always set the next one to keep her on my follow-ups list. Otherwise, she'll just go back into the flow. So let's say I'm going to follow up again in two days just to check in on her. Let's, so now I log it. She's back on my follow-ups list again. Does this make sense? Easy, right? Connect with people. Start conversations. Have great conversations. Uncover interest. Invite. Then follow up like a pro. Now, I want to talk to you guys real quick. I showed you how easy it is. How many of you guys think you could actually do this? This way, yeah. Now, here's the problem. Most people don't follow up enough. You guys have heard this, right? The fortunes in the follow-up. Most people will follow up like three or four times, maybe. Maybe. And they feel like that's pretty good. How many of you guys have had somebody interested, then you followed up three or four times and there was no response, nothing but crickets? Has that happened? If that hasn't happened to you, you haven't tried enough. Most people, that's the case. Here's what I want you guys to understand. First off, mindset shift. 80% of all sales happen between the seventh and 10th follow-up. Okay? 80% of all sales happen between the seventh and 10th follow-up. A couple of you just died a little inside when I said seven to 10. <laughs> it's true though. That means 20% of the people that you talk to, they're going to sign up right away. How many of you got a few people to sign up right away? That happens. That's like when that happens, you just go, oh my gosh, thank you, Lord, for that person that made it so easy on me. The vast majority of people won't. They need seven to 10 connects before they even get close, okay? I, got, I want you guys to understand that. But how many of you truly believe that this business opportunity can change people's lives? Good. Here's what I want you guys to really, this is your mindset shift. First off, does anybody follow up 10 times typically? Do I have anybody like that on here? Are you guys worried about being annoying? Yeah, We're all, we all are. So here's the mindset, mindset shift. If you wanna help people and change their lives, you can't help them unless they actually get their business starter kit, right? Business basics kit, is that what you call it? Business basics kit. You can't help them until they at least get that far. And if 80% of them won't sign up until seven to 10, like the only way you can help these people is by following up more. That's all you have, it's the only tool you have to help them. So I want you to have a mindset shift. Don't think of following up as annoying, but think of it as this. Following up as an act of love. Following up as an act of love. Okay? That's how you love people. Not following up, by the way, communicates this. I don't care about you. I don't care about you. When you fail to follow up enough, people feel like you just don't care about them. I guess she was just in it for the sale. You don't want that, right? Okay, now here's the good news. I'm gonna teach you two rules that if you follow, people won't be annoyed by you. Simple. Now, for those of you who, don't, who are already ready for bed, just know this. If you use my 10 scripts in order, they're numbered, by the way, one through 10 in Teamsy for following up, follow up number one, follow up number two. Like seriously, you can't mess that up. They already follow these rules. They already follow these rules, so you don't even have to learn them if you use my scripts. But here's the rules. Number one, when you're following up, this is after you've invited somebody to the business or invited them to be a customer. When you're following up, number one, don't ask them to do anything in your follow-up. Don't ask them to do anything. How many of you guys love to get a voicemail that says, please call me back? I have a question. I need to talk to you. That's the most annoying thing in the world, isn't it? What the heck is your question? Why don't you just text me your question? Don't ask them to do anything. Don't ask them to answer. Don't ask them to call you. Don't ask them to message you. Don't, they don't even need to respond. Don't ask them to do anything. That's the first way to not be annoying. Make sense? Number two, when you message a follow-up, it needs to be messaged. It needs to be messaged. It needs to be short and messaged. They need to be able to read it. It has to be able to be read. And it has to be short. Why? Because... Your message never arrives at the right moment. Is, have you guys noticed that when you get a message from somebody, it's always at the wrong moment? You can't really do anything with it right at that moment. You can't open it. You can't respond to it. Like you've got a, a, a toddler crawling up your leg or you've got, right? <laughs> Isn't this true? Like something's always going on. You're driving your car, whatever. That's, that's true of your prospects too. Like they just, the message, they want your message. And here's what happens. You want to see that message. Like we want to know what it says but we're not going to open it. We can't open it because I can't respond right now. 
I don't want her to see that I opened it and think I'm a jerk for not responding. How many of you guys are like that? So if your message is messaged, Facebook Messenger, text, whatever, and it's short, they can see the whole thing on the lock screen of their phone without opening it. Make sense? You guys are laughing because you're exactly like me and everybody else in the world. So your message comes in and it's like, ah, it's the worst time ever to get a message. What does it say? Oh, okay, great. That was a nice message from Melissa, great. They wanna know. Now, if it's long and there's a dot, 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 oh, now I gotta open it to read it. I'm not gonna open it till later. Make sense? You send somebody a voice message, like you do like the voice thing. I'm like, I can't listen to voice. How many of you guys have kids under three? Anybody have kids under three? Gina, Gina, seriously. Do you ever notice that you can be on your phone like this all day? As soon as you put it up to your ear, have you ever noticed I how kids- I totally don't know how old my kids are. You don't know how old they are? Have you noticed- They're that, older than three. Have you noticed that when you pick your phone up to talk or to listen, how your kids come out of the woodwork like banshees? Oh, always. You can be like this all day. Someone sends you a voice message, what happens? Oh, I gotta listen to this message. I gotta listen to this message. Let me listen to it. Nobody listens to the message. You're pointing at him right now. He knows it's true too. It's like, it's like the worst competition ever. People used to be worried about being a middle child. Now children are just worried about you're getting a phone call. He didn't care where mom was until she got on the <laughs> call. Yeah. I but haven't seen him in five hours. And then all of a sudden he needs to be with me. Well, mm -hmm. hopefully he's getting some good uh, philosophical training today. He's getting some age. good life skills. Yeah. This is better than what he learns in fourth grade, right, Tyler? <laughs> if I knew I had fourth graders on here, I'd be I'd do my budgeting and financial uh, responsibility. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so you guys get the idea. So message it, short, sweet, don't ask them to do anything. If you keep it right there, people will love getting these messages. They'll be delighted to hear from you. Here's what will happen. I just want you guys to understand. The vast majority of people will not even respond to your first five follow-ups. These are people who are really interested and excited. And you're like, what is happening? Why are they not responding? What most people in our business do is after about three no responses, they start making up stories. Um, they'll say things like, I guess they weren't interested or um, I guess, you know, maybe they don't have any money. Maybe money's tight. I heard her husband's a jerk. He's probably he's probably not supporting this. And uh, Melissa, you've heard all this on team calls, I bet. How's your news prospect coming? Well, I thought they were really interested, but I think, and then we, then we fill in the explanation for why they're not responding. Here's why they're not responding. When the message came through, the dog was throwing up on the baby. The next time the message came through, they were driving. The next, does this make sense? It's not that they're not interested. It's that their life is happening. So if you follow those two rules, what happens is about six follow-ups in, twice as long as most people have already given up on, you'll get a response that says, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry I haven't responded. Thank you so much for following up with me. This happens consistently every time. So here's the good news. With Teamsy, you don't have to spend time worrying about it. I don't have to sit there worrying like, why isn't she responding? You know what I do every day? I log into Teamsy. I connect with who's up next, prospects, customers, consultants. And then I go to my follow-ups list. I send everybody the next follow-up on the list and I'm done. And I just keep those people on my follow-ups list forever until they convert, honestly. The people who are interested, I'll tell you guys a story of this guy real quick and then we'll, um, I'll do a couple, some questions. We'll do some Q&A and then we'll send you guys on your way because I know it's late. But um, I worked with this guy, um, I knew him, but I knew him not well. Like we, he was, uh, he had consulting services from the company I worked for, but I never personally worked on his business. We just knew each other from meetings, conventions, he had a nice rapport, his name was Mike. When I started doing the network business side hustle, I messaged him, he didn't respond. He was on my, on Teams, he has a three star, so that's every three months. Three months later, he came on my list again, I messaged him again, he didn't respond. Kept going. Three months later, he comes on my list again. I messaged him again. He didn't respond. Three months later, this is now a year. I messaged him again. No response. I'm thinking, should I just leave him off the list? Ah, whatever. Just keep going. The next time I messaged him, 15 months in, he responded. Eric, I'm sorry I didn't respond, but I've been watching you. I'm really impressed with what you've done in the last year. Um, I want to join your team. 
I've already been to your website. This is what I'm interested in starting with. This is where I want to come in. He did all the research. This was a guy who owned, you know, millions of dollars in, in, in investment properties. He was a serious guy. He was doing his research. But here's the cool thing. How much time did I spend um, thinking about him? About five seconds every three months. Does this make sense? Because I just let Teamsy do the lead. Teamsy just led me every day. And what's cool about this is as you're connecting with people, there's going to be people interested right away. So you're going, to be, you're going to have business and people joining the team right away. And then some of those people take a little bit longer to incubate. And, but every single month, you have relationships that are getting warmer and getting to the point of being ready. Every single month, you're developing, you know, does this make sense? And it's a beautiful system because you never burn relationships. You never isolate people or get rejected. It's just you get to share and you get to be cool and you get to be the center of your community that you're building. And everybody's excited about what you're doing, if that makes sense. Okay, uh, let me just show you. Uh, actually, I think I've showed you enough, Teamsy. Do you guys have questions? If you have questions, here's what I want you to do. Just um, unmute your microphone. If you've got a question, ask away. I'm happy to answer a few. Um, and then uh, I'll give you some action steps and we'll send you guys on your way. They're like, wow, no questions. Drop the mic. <laughs> I drop it, but it's on a little thing. All right, let me give you some action steps. First off, uh, are any of you guys using Teams already? Okay, Melissa is. Melissa's like, I want this whole team using this. Um, so a couple of really cool things are happening. Let me just give you guys a little background on this. So I was a Beachbody coach. I'm not, I'm not in any network marketing company anymore, okay? Because Teams just like took off. I was a Beachbody coach doing it on the side. I built Teamsy because I was like, oh my gosh, I need this. We released it. Just, we just released it and it took off. And then, we, then we, another network came to us and said, can you do Teamsy for us? Can you do Teamsy for us? So now we're in, we have over 70 custom versions. And like I said, we're building one for you guys. Next week, it'll be out. It's just taken off. People are getting tremendous results. I told you guys in the beginning, 21, 21 customers and 12 distributors over 90 days is the average for the people that are engaged with Teamsy. Pretty cool, right? Just connecting with people and making their day. Um, so here's what I want you guys to do. Go to teamsy.com, T-E-A-M-Z-Y.com. Click on start trial, okay? And start your free trial. It's free for 30 days. You have full access, okay? Get your free trial started. Um, right now, you're going to pick, if you do it, if you do it right away, you're going to pick Teamsy Standard. Okay, that's the one I demoed tonight, Teamsy Standard. And then, um, that's the wrong thing, I didn't want to share that. And then once we have the Scout and Seller version, you're just going to send a message to our help desk. There's a little help button in Teamsy saying, hey, can you switch me to the Scout and Seller version? That's it, and we'll switch you over. Here we go. This is what I was looking for, the action steps. You guys are visual people, right? So get your 30-day free trial started. That's a no-brainer, okay? Get your teammates to get the 30-day free trial. Whoever wasn't on this call, tell them about it. Um, you're going to have the recording tomorrow so they can watch the recording of this training. If you've enjoyed it, let them know, hey, you need to watch this, okay? Tell them not to be freaked out that it was an hour-long video. Just watch the first 15 minutes, and if you like it, you keep going. Here's the next thing I want you to do. Choose a 30-day success partner to do the free trial with you, okay? A 30-day success partner that, you don't, you're not married to this person as your success partner forever, just for the month, okay? Eric? Yes. Sorry, can I ask a question real quick because I missed part of that. Um, can you just explain again, because you said next week you guys will have a platform with our terminology in it for Scout and Seller, is that yes. correct? Yes. So um, two things I just want to clarify. So um, if we were to start the trial now and enter all of our customer data, it's just a seamless transition. There's no re-entering on a different platform or anything. Correct. A seamless transition. Okay. Yes. And then, um, this is so awesome by the way, and I'm psyched to, to share this with everyone. Thanks Melissa for setting it up, but I just want to clarify so that people aren't confused on the call. So this is not scout and seller has not hired teamsy as a corporate company just so you're clear on that um because Correct. i know we're saying that we're creating a platform for scout and seller what eric means is we're create he's his team's creating a platform for 
the independent consultant could Correct. choose. Awesome. Correct. Correct. Yeah. No, it's good clarification. Um, though we're very open to being endorsed by Scout and Seller, but I know we, we haven't really met them yet. We, we did receive recently uh, the full endorsement of the Juice Plus company to all their representatives, which was huge internationally. So that's kind of cool. And we've got a couple other corporate entities talking to us. So we would love to do that. But yes, that's a good clarification. We are not in any way affiliated with Scout and Seller. We, um, and we'll be very careful to do everything on the up and up so they won't get mad at us. But the bottom line is this is a tool just like Gmail or anything else you use to manage your contacts. It's just going to make you more efficient building your business as an independent rep. So that's good. Okay. So you get a 30-day success partner. What I want you guys to do is hold each other accountable to doing the activity for 30 days. So you can sign up for a free trial and not use it, right? Have you guys ever done that? What I like you to do is, is when you complete your Teamsy dashboard, you get this little you crushed it uh, thing that comes on. It says 100% you crushed it. I want you to screenshot that and message that over to your partner every day. When you've done your day's activities, you just message it to them. What happens is maybe you didn't do anything today and you get that message and you're like, oh, shoot, I need to go do it. But here's what I want you guys to understand. Teamsy gives you the confidence to know that you're doing the right thing in your business to build it. And it also lets you go, I'm done. I'm done today. For those of you guys who feel like you're never done because you haven't got the results yet, you get to just be done. I've done everything I need today to build my business. Okay. Because one thing that I've known teaching the relationship marketing system for the past 16 years, when you do the activities, the results always follow. When you do hey, them consistently, I should say. Hey, how's it going? Good question. Uh, I, I was looking on your website and I didn't see anything about the pricing. Uh, is there a place on there to look at that? Uh, yeah, it should be down if you scroll, but so it's free for the first 30 days. After 30 days, it's $29.99 a month to subscribe to Teams. It's just less than a dollar a day to have your business fully laid out and planned for you. Okay. Oh, I see it now. Yeah, it's right down here. Okay. Yeah. So it's $29.99 a month. You can, you can get a little bit more of a discount if you go annual with it. Once you fall in love with it, you can do that. So just think of it this way. You get in there for free for a month. You get one sale. You've paid your subscription, right? You've paid your subscription. So if Teamsy can help you get one sale each month, which goodness, if you're using it, you will, right? It's paid for. So you just figure that's cool. It actually sustains itself, which is awesome. Plus you get to write that off your taxes. That's the cool thing too, guys. You get to write off your wine on your taxes. Well, if you have the right accountant anyways. Okay. So um, does that make sense? <laughs> so, so get your, uh, yeah, this is going on YouTube. Well, just kidding, IRS. Just kidding. Just joking. Just talking about their marketing. So 30-day um, free trial, get a success partner. The last action step is I give you guys a five-day challenge, five days. So what I want you to do is in five days, connect with 100 people, 20 a day for five days in a row, okay? You can do the 20 connects, send out really quick with Teamsy. Um, what's going to happen is you'll get about a 50%, 40 to 50% response rate, okay? Which means that you're having... 40 to 50 conversations in five days. Why do I want you to go through this? I want you to see how much momentum you can actually create in your business in just a few days. Does it make sense? And now you have a way to do it so you're not like vomiting on people. Just saying, connecting, saying, oh, some people won't respond right away. Some people will respond and the conversation will fizzle out immediately. They'll be like, I'm great, Eric. Thanks for asking. Bye, you know? That's okay. Some people will, but some of those will be engaging and you'll have some good conversations. Does this make sense? So five day challenge, hundred people in five days. I want, once you have that experience that you can create relational momentum in your business in just a few days, it's going to change the way you look at your business. It's going to change the way you look at your business because then I want you guys to understand that you can do this at any time. You can pick this up at any time, be consistent and start getting results. Make sense? Okay. Um, any other questions before I bless you guys and send you on your way? Well, I just want to say thanks for spending some time with me tonight. I hope you guys learned a few things that you can apply in your business that'll be helpful to you. I'd love to have you in our Team Z family. Um, but thank you again, Melissa, for having us. God bless you all. Have a great night. I'll send you, Melissa, this um, recording tomorrow. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Good night, Bye. guys. Thank you.